This is the Musilog Magazine podcast with host Sam Archer. Hello, hello, hello. We want to welcome all of you here today to the Musilog Magazine podcast. We have a special guest in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know why I'm laughing? I do the same thing when I start a, when I start an interview. I say, hello, hello, hello. Maybe it's yes. a Caribbean thing. Uh, yes, we, we say things uh, for uh, emphasis. Yeah. I thought yes. I, I was just like, why do I do this? Yeah, you did it too. I was like, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like when you're taking directions and you're driving, you say, yeah, turn, turn, turn. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right, 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 right. That's right. what we do. That's yeah, what we yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so happy to have Magali uh, here with us today. I don't want to mess up the la- the middle name. <laughs> well, actually, it's the full last name, Kaliman Christopher. That's the full last name. Oh, I didn't want Kaliman to give up Christopher. my last name. Yes, Kaliman Christopher. Oh, okay, okay, nothing. Hey, amen. <laughs> we receive it. But we're so happy to have you on board today. The, uh, this is uh, the vibe of this is so great. I think I might just let it run. It, it seems really nice. But we're here to talk about. Uh, you have a, an event coming up. Yeah, it's called the Conx Shell International Film Fest, yes. and it's going to be here soon in 2021. And take it away. Okay, <laughs> uh, my name is Magalie Collingman Christopher, and I'm the festival director and founder of Conx Shell International Film Festival. And May 21st to May 23rd, I want you to be in front of your computer because it's all virtual. Mm. And we're going to be screening films by Caribbean diaspora and Caribbean filmmakers. And we'll be presenting panel discussions where experts in the industry will be talking about various topics from COVID protocol on Mm. film sets to um, how to eliminate the barriers to entries for Caribbean filmmakers who use different languages or different dialects in their films Mm -hmm. to the range is vast. So go to our website, Conchelle International Film Fest and find out what our panels are gonna be. We're gonna start posting all that information in the beginning of April. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I I think I shared a lot. Do you, I think I'm gonna let you take the floor. You you ready to take the floor? It's your Uh, turn? Yeah. yeah, I can keep on talking. (laughs) <laughs> but you know, we will also have an amazing masterclass uh-huh. taught by Monty Ross. This man has produced some films. I mean, like, I'm not going to even list it because it's going to take up the whole time. But mm-hmm. that masterclass, every event that we are producing for the film festival is to elevate, celebrate, illuminate, educate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you Amen. know, celebrate because we're also going to be having after parties. So. Online. Virtual, it's going to be virtual after parties. Virtual after parties. You see, the website that we're using, the platform, the streaming mm-hmm. platform that we're using is called filmocracy.com. And filmocracy.com is a platform that was built in a kismet kind of way because it was first launched, I think, in 2019 before mm-hmm. COVID. And since COVID, a lot of film festivals have gone online and they host a lot of film festivals on that platform. Oh, wow. And yeah, so just go on there and you can check out all the film festivals that are currently taking place, that will be mm. taking place. And what it allows you to do is kind of like here when you get onto you know Zoom or StreamYard and you come mm-hmm. in and you turn your camera on, you can turn your camera on and see the other person at the table with you. Because every event, every panel conversation, every mm-hmm. workshop, you'll be sitting at a table and you can turn on your camera and say hello to the person sitting with you. And if you don't like the people at the table, you go to the next table, <laughs> say hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but hopefully you'll be busy pay, have, you know, paying attention to the panel when it's a panel event or, but when it's time to party, you could say hello. Okay, you know? okay. So I have uh, two questions in reference to that. How could film lovers get involved and how could filmmakers get involved? Well, our, our, accept, our submission period has closed. Mm-hmm. So filmmakers will be involved as attendees. Mm-hmm. 
So okay. a film festival is created for film lovers and filmmakers because let me go back to who I am. Okay. <laughs> I'm an actor, but mm -hmm. I started producing my own films in, wow. 2003. Wow. It's been that long. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I started writing, producing, directing my own short films and submitting my work to film festivals because I've always loved film. Mm -hmm. And I started attending film festivals in 1999 after mm -hmm. I graduated from grad school and discovering this is where I have to be both as an actor mm -hmm. and as a content creator because film production is about community. Mm -hmm. And these festivals allow you to meet other creators as well mm -hmm. as lovers of the art form and starting to build your community. Does that mean that everybody you meet is gonna help you make your project come true right now? No. <laughs> no, but it does mean that you'll say, I know Paul and Paul is really cool. I'm gonna have him in my, in my contact the sheet. Basis. And then Paul will say, hey, Madly, I see that you're about to do this. I have time on my hands. Um, I want to help out. And you'd be like, really, Paul? He'll be like, yeah, really, Madly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you have a, a, someone who, who really believes in your project helping out. Mm -hmm. And that is a gift and a half for an indie filmmaker. Yes. Or even if you have a question about COVID protocol. Mm and you met someone and they were really inform informed about it and you wanna, and you're living in Jamaica but you plan to shoot in New York and you met someone at our event who lives mm -hmm. in New York, you could say, hey, I'm about to come to New York. Can you, can, I have some questions about the protocol in New York. And I'll say, oh yeah, 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 no problem. Here's mm -hmm. who you should talk to, blah, 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 blah. See, so it's about connections that mm -hmm. mean something, not connections that, 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 that are, filled with expectations, but connections that are filled with hope. Mm, okay. Right? So there's a difference between hope and expectations. The hope of tomorrow as opposed to the expectations of a delivery of an end good. Right? Yeah. And it's also about celebrating the work that's been done. Uh, a number of our films were directed and written by actors. Yes. And I'm yes. an actor and I'm always excited about filmmakers who are actors who are deciding mm -hmm. to take the reins in their life. And this is the right time to do that too. Yes. <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm actually in contact with someone and I and I want to invite her to be on one of our panels because she mm. is in Haiti and she is she has this foundation and it's all about empowering the, the young artists in Haiti to shoot their films using their iPhones. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully you, you can do a be lot. on board. You, you can, can do, do I mean, seriously, yeah. I love shooting experimental shorts because mm -hmm. when you shoot a, a project and, and, and it, it's a narrative short and it's got a through line, that's one thing. But experimental shorts are like writing poetry for me. Mm, okay. Okay. And a lot of my footage is straight off of my iPhone. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Because you're walking outside and you get inspired and you're like, oh, I'm writing a poem right now. It's a visual poem. <laughs> and yeah, it's done. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So basically the film lovers and film directors at this point will all be attendees at this stage. They'll be attendees mm -hmm. and participants in the conversation because of the interactive nature of the platform that we're using. Mm -hmm. um, not only can you go ahead and sh add your comment in a chat, depending on the scenario, like the workshop that we're gonna be hosting with Monty Ross, we have seats around the table where mm -hmm. select people will be able to get a ticket to have a conversation with Monty Ross. Mm, okay. All right. There, and that's, that's that 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 is a great opportunity that you won't get because you're not going to be able to walk down the street and say, "Hey, Monty, I have a question for you." But <laughs> if you're sitting at the table and you know there'll be attendees watching, observing the conversation, but because of this platform, I'm talking to you, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. We're not so, at Starbucks. <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> We're not in the studio together. 
We're in the virtual studio. We're in the building. We're in the We're building. In the building. <laughs> this is the yeah. Musilog Magazine podcast with host Sam Archer. We'll be right back. Is, is there any more room for vendors? Can vendors be involved? Yes, we are. We on our website. You see, you can mm -hmm. contact us if you're a vendor, and mm -hmm. we are going. And if we get enough applications or inquiries, we're going to set up a building for vendors. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a difference between a vendor and a sponsor. Okay. A vendor. There's a different price point. You go in there, you'll be able to have a link to your website because it's all about online vendors. You have a link to your website, and and you could have a video, and so people could say, "Oh, I want to order your stuff." Okay. And so there'll be the vendors mart, depending on mm -hmm. how many people demonstrate an interest. If they, if you go onto our website, Conchell International Fest mm -hmm. Film Fest, ConchellIFF.com, you'll see a inquiry sheet. Put your information in and we'll be in touch. And um, depending on how many people we get inquiring about it, we'll put a building together. Because, see, on this site, <laughs> we're going to have a festival village. And so they're going to be like these little buildings. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm designing it. I, I'm coming up with the idea for the designer right now. I'm okay. having fun. Okay. I'm having fun. I'm torn between whether it's going to be a New York setting or an mm. island setting or, but all that to say, there will, depending on how many people contact us, we will have a vendor building and mm -hmm. people will be able to order things from your website off of our platform. Okay. That's and, it, you know, it'll be up to you to, you know, get the word out that your stuff are, is our will be featured at our festival. You have to continue with your marketing, but we, I love going to film festivals where there's a vendor's mart. Like Pan-African Film Festival, when it's live, you mm -hmm. always meet these amazing vendors who have like awesome, like artisan works and you can yeah. buy things that you can't find. That's right, that's right. Anything. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. Yeah, so I do wanna bug you on- You're gonna bug me? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, I need, I need to get some water in me if you're going to bug me, okay. You're funny. <laughs> I'm curious as to why you chose the name Conk's Shell. Call to action. Conk Shell Productions is the mother company for Conk Shell International Fest. And my call to action is to encourage Caribbean diaspora artists to take the space to own mm. their unique voice mm. and to end preconceptions as to who we are as a people. Because many people don't know anything about the Caribbean other than sand, beaches, hot food, <laughs> liquor, <laughs> chill out, right? And so there are these preconceptions as to who the 26 nations are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not all alike. And they call all of them Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> and you and perhaps it's our responsibility to help them learn. Yes, yes. Not perhaps. So the the the, the, the conch shell is the, the the thing that brought people together in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. The thing that brought the many indigenous people were brought together by the sound of the conch shell. Mm. Mm. And um a combination of my love of the shape of the conch shell, its purpose okay. in our community. My grandfather had a collection of conch shells and I still mm. have them on them. And I had a long conversation with my husband. I was like, I'm thinking, what is the symbol that brings us all together? The Caribbean diaspora people, it's like the diaspora, people often think, think of the diaspora and they think of, you know, from the African continent, that diaspora, but my mother emigrated to America from Haiti. Mm -hmm. 
And generations of people have immigrated to the US, Africa, mm -hmm. Europe, Canada, even South America from the Caribbean, bringing their stories and mm. having to adapt to the fact that you're not quite from the Caribbean and you're not quite from where you are, so you are you. Yeah, yeah. And you are a combination of the two. And it's okay to not just be American or Canadian or British or just be Trini, Trini Jamaican, mm -hmm. Haitian or Cuban, to be a product of your multicultural existence. Mm. And so your story needs to be told. And at Conchild Productions, our vision is that our artists will evoke change in society with their work. I, I was just gonna say we have stories to tell, so yes. We have stories to tell. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what those stories are. So when people, uh, we've actually had conversations at last year's festival, Hear Her Call Caribbean American Women's Theater Festival, is a festival that we hosted in 2020. Mm -hmm. right at the beginning of COVID. Wow. March 4th and March 7th. So March will always be a month that makes me go. <gasps> <laughs> That's when things changed. That's where mm -hmm. your life, my life, everyone's life changed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we hosted it in 2019 and 2020. And at the 2020 event, we hosted a panel where the conversation was, what is the Caribbean American, Caribbean diaspora voice? And it's an evolving answer mm. because many of us didn't own that voice. Yeah. yeah. We just wanted to fit into the society that we had adopted, our parents had adopted as our home. And if you look at the literature that's out, like West Side Story, was not written by a Puerto Rican person, but it's about the Puerto Rican diaspora. And I think it's wonderful that these two people decided to make this musical. And it's wonderful that this musical still exists. And you know, art is art, but we need to tell our diaspora story Correct. in our yeah. words, not in the observer's words. And it's okay for the observer to honor what they think our story is, but isn't mm -hmm. it time for us to tell the story the way we want to tell it. And that's what I feel, it's the time, and that's why I've created this space. Okay, so is this the, will this be the first Kunk's Shell International Film Fest? Wow. wow and it's treatment. about timing, right? Because mm, yeah. last year, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? I'm like, no, no, that's, that's, hey, you're at home, Musilog, we're here. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're entertainment, music, and culture lives. Okay. Take okay. it away. <laughs> so last year, I had the honor of collaborating with what is known as Third Horizon Film Festival, mm -hmm. but then they were known as CAFA, Caribbean Film Academy, and okay. they curated a selection of films by Caribbean American females. And we presented it at, at the Hear Her Call Caribbean American Women's Theater Festival because I wanted to start the conversation about the voice of the filmmaker. As a result of COVID-19 and the opportunities for producing events online, mm -hmm. I realize now, now is the time to start a conversation about the filmmaker. But I didn't wanna just focus on the Caribbean diaspora, but also the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Because as I suspected, I've discovered in conversation with a number of filmmakers from the Caribbean that they don't feel that the international community recognizes their story as an international story. So let's change that conversation by embracing each other, diaspora and indigenous Caribbean filmmaker. Okay. And the only way we could do that is to have a space to connect. And I've seen there are a lot of film festivals that are dedicated to the Caribbean filmmaker, a lot of film festivals dedicated to the African diaspora. There are a lot of film festivals out there. But I really felt that Conchelle Productions mm -hmm. needed to 
exist, start the conversation about how our events can change the story, the preconceptions on both okay. sides, outside of the Caribbean and within the diaspora, and maybe empower us as a people, as a community. I, I, I feel your passion on the subject. <laughs> I do feel your passion on the subject. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. This is the Musilog Magazine podcast with host Sam Archer. We'll be right back. So, so basically, uh, Kong Shell and Film International Film Fest is going to be carving out a, a special area. So you you're going to be pretty much solving a problem. Um, I don't know if we're going to be solving a problem. We're going to be, you know, putting a, a, a flashlight a, on the problem. Yeah, putting a flashlight. <laughs> it's not a problem. It's an opportunity. Okay. I okay. try. You know, I try my best to change the, the language so that people mm -hmm. don't feel a weight on them. Okay. okay. And when you say opportunity, it's like opportunity. When yes, you say problems, yes. like problem. <laughs> I, I mean, for me, that's how I feel. So that's, that's okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the reason why I asked you about the name, however, because going back, you know, you said the name. Conchal, yeah. Where I grew up, the fishermen used it. And what do they use it so for? So when they caught their fish, and they're coming through your village, they'll blow the conch shell. And then they're like, oh, okay, fish is here. And then so we all, you know, so all the mothers and aunties and sisters and whoever, they all come down to the, uh, normally it would be like a Land Rover Jeep or something, and all the fresh <laughs> fish is in the back. And uh, they'll come with their containers and actually buy fish. Nice, um, nice. And the fishermen will go from village to village until they sell out. Uh, Flowing the conch shell, yeah. come on down. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I love so. that. There's a statue in Haiti, mm -hmm. and you know that wasn't part of my thinking when I thought of it. But there's a statue of a man of a slave on his knees, blowing the conch shell. Ah, the call to action. Mm. And someone sent me the picture. They said, "Is that why you came up with it?" I was like, "Maybe through God, you know, because no, it's the it power, is, it the spirit of the people." Yeah, it's a, it is a it's a call, and when you hear it, it it's a unique. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. You know, mm -hmm. you just hear this thing, and it's like, oh, you know, and and it means, it, I mean, of course, the culturally it would mean something, but it is a call. It's a call. It's, to it's definitely a call. So that's that's really really cool. So um, I'm excited about this. This is great. You know, I know there's a lot of filmmakers. Actually, um, I'm also going to publicly invite you to be on another podcast that I'm a part of. It's called Caribbean Feedback. Okay. And- um, what's, what's the premise? A backyard conversation where we give our outlook on some current events and- um, But I'm Caribbean on, American. On, that's okay. With Everyone is included. It's not, okay. it's not like okay. a, it's not exclusive just to Caribbean folks. It's just our feedback on okay. whatever the topic is. Okay. So um, it's it's open, and um, so I'll get you some more details on that. Is there anything but, about uh, the festival? Because we had a really great, nice slice of the conversation here. Is there anything that you'd like to add that you'd like you know the listeners to know or or our online viewing audience to know about what you have coming up? It's gonna be fun, and if you're not mm -hmm. there, you're not gonna have fun. So you gotta be there. <laughs> And you got to follow us on social media uh -huh. so that you could know when we are um, giving info about discounts. Because the first in the first few weeks of April, we're going to be giving discounts on festival passes. Mm -hmm. So if you want to come and you're like, money's tight, mm -hmm. you got to follow us to know when the discount time is. Okay. You know? Okay. And, um, it, I remember 
my first film that I submitted in a film festival, it was called Yes, Madam. And the first festival that accepted our film was Martha's Vineyard Film Festival. And I went out to Martha's Vineyard. This wasn't during COVID, so you could actually travel to places. Went to this festival, it was its first year. And now it's like the most popular festival of all time, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so all that to say, inaugural means endless possibilities. Mm. But if you're not there to see what it was like in the beginning, how will you be able to truly treasure how it grows, right? Mm. So be yeah. there in the beginning because it is by establishing the existence of an audience that there's an increased awareness of the need to feed the wants of the audience. Mm. So if you want the international market to regard our stories with value, why would they if you don't? Mm. So come, attend, mm. okay. attend. That way they will know we need to back producers and filmmakers of the Caribbean diaspora and of the Caribbean because there's a want, there's a need. Mm. And if you're not there, like Tyler Perry proved, he built his audience and everybody's like, oh, Tyler, 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 Tyler. But he's like, I have an audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, okay. He set, he, set, he set the platform. He set the platform. If you support each other, the world will be excited. Okay. So support yeah. these filmmakers because they've got some power. Because our theme this year is the year of the hero, right? So ah, hero, okay. shiro. That's the theme. That's year the of the theme. hero. So the whole theme for Conch Shell Productions overall is the year of the hero, shiro. And so the festival, the works that we're going to be presenting, these filmmakers are exploring the concept of hero. Sometimes it's an anti-hero. Sometimes it's it's you know a different kind of hero, but. Don't we all deserve to see stories where they're heroes? Of course, of course. So, I love heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I mean, I grew up reading comic books, so you know, I you know I love heroes. So, what I'm going to jump in and ask you, um, I just have some final questions. Okay. Now okay. that we've gotten all the important things out of the way. Now, do okay. you have any personal projects that we can look out for in the near future? Wow, okay. I am. I play the role of Antoinette Pierre on an original Netflix show called Grand Army. And oh. I speak Haitian Creole in that, so. Oh, but, okay. And uh, that was a great pleasure. I'm also a writer and um, a few of my works have been produced this year, uh, but I'll be sure to post it on social media. Should that occur? Okay. Um, okay. At the end of the year, Conchell Productions, we're going to be producing a series of plays written by myself and Juan Ramirez Jr. And um, look out for Conchell Productions and see. It's called The Tetralogy of Our Times. Okay. Kind of a glance at our journey in this crazy planet at this time in our history and looking towards the future. Okay, okay. So, let's- And! Uh, oh, oh and. there's an and. Oh, I'm sorry, go <laughs> ahead, go ahead. There's an and. <laughs> I'm a proud producer. I, I am a proud presenter of other people's voices. So, but as you want me to talk about me? Uh, well, or you want me to talk um, about the things that I do do in the world because if you're talking about me look out for me the next time you see me on tv say whoop whoop i'll, I'll look out for you but but you can share i mean we're, we're chopping it up so you yeah can, you can you i can would share. definitely say if you have a kindle mm -hmm. uh and you have kindle unlimited you need to check out our publication we're not neutral it's published uh -huh. by conchell press it's a collection of the plays that we were presented in Reset series last year where we were talking about police brutality and racism in America. And the writers were BIPOC writers, three theaters, Brata Productions, Conchal Productions, and Kumukaua Theater in Hawaii. We came together and the writers, ah, oh, the works are strong. So if you're saying I've never read a play written by a Caribbean American or a Latino American, or get the book. 
It's called We Are Not Neutral. It's available on Amazon.com. And okay. um, and if you have Kindle Unlimited, all you have to do is press and read it because it's like going to the library. Okay. So I know okay. our community loves, loves reading. And um, these plays are worth reading. These plays okay. are um, the voice of people who deal with oppression owning their right to not be oppressed. How's that? Profound. Yeah. This yeah. is the Musilog Magazine podcast with host Sam Archer. We'll be right back. So um, I want to detour a little bit for our final set of convos. Okay. Um, I ask my guests something fun ever so often. Okay. So what is your favorite color? My favorite color. Mm. Yeah, what's your favorite Blue, color? Blue, because I think uh, of the ocean. Blue. And the ocean bring me joy. Blue. Okay, let me let me take another that. You're you're a blue. You're into the blue, huh? I'm into the blue. You uh, see, I'm wearing okay. Larimar blue. It's from it's a stone from the Domin they say it's from the Dominican Republic. I say it's from the okay. island of Haiti. So there. <laughs> okay. But Larimar, I love the color blue because it connects earth and sky, doesn't it? Ooh. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of colors to love, but the first thing that came to mind is what's, blue. What's, the first thing blue? that always comes to mind is blue. Is blue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about your kitchen habits. What do you love preparing? What is your favorite thing oh, that you love please. to make? Salad. <laughs> Salad? Okay, is, here's the thing. Is, here's the thing. I the can first, cook. Though. I'm this not is... saying I can't cook. <laughs> she said salad. <laughs> but I don't like the time it takes to cook. Okay? I don't <laughs> like salad. the time it takes. So, whatever I can go <laughs> soup, <laughs> um, brown rice, <laughs> but anything that requires a whole lot of process, I'm like, I have other things to do with my life. And yes, I can cook. I feel you though. I, yeah. I never had someone say salad. <laughs> salad is so good, man. So, all you have to do is wash it and toss it. I feel you. Eat I it. feel you. <laughs> and I soup. Feel you. Soup is also throw it in. No, you got to chop up for soup. Yeah, I know. You I do. Know. I know. But still. But what if you had a day that you really felt like you wanted to go into the kitchen? What would you okay. prepare? Hmm. I would prepare things I love to eat. So I'm a vegetarian. So um, okay. I love black beans. So mm. okay. a nice hummus, black bean hummus mm. with some black rice. I've fallen in love with black rice. If you've never had black rice, you need to buy some black rice. Brown rice is nice. Black rice is better. Okay. Black. Okay. Black I'm rice with mushrooms and, and, and sweet peas. So you chop up the mur see, see the thing with black rice, in Haiti we have this dish called Jirak Donjon. And it's made from this mushroom that only comes from Haiti. But if you can't get that mushroom, I came up with this recipe. You buy black rice, you mm. get some mushrooms, chop them up, make sure it's good mushrooms like shiitake, not just mushroom mushrooms, good tasting mushrooms, put it in there. That way it has a flavor of the mushroom. And since I don't eat shrimp, I don't put shrimp, but I put lima beans or um, peas, green, you know, like green peas, but I like the lima beans. And so you have a vegetarian Jirak Jonjo. Because Jirak Jonjo is supposed to have shrimp. Yeah. But so you're, I'm not you're, doing that. You're also a chemist, so to speak. Oh, or, yeah. Because, um, you know, the, you know, cooking is like chemistry, it, it's the <laughs> yeah. marriage of flavors. And, you yeah. know, 
yeah, yeah, I like I told you, I can cook. I just choose not to. But when I do cook, it better taste good. So mm -hmm. it's and I used to love baking, but now I'm gluten intolerant, so I don't bake anymore as oh. much as I used to. I used to be one of those I gotta bake kind of people, but now it's just like, okay, I can bake. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so my uh, my final question is, uh, well, this might, well, I'm going to throw it at you and then we'll see what happens. Okay. What do you have in your MP3 player right now? I am not a big music listener. I am a book mm. listener. Oh, so well, let's, go, books the, on let's tape. go with the books. Let's right. go with the books. Let's go with the books. Um, I'm currently listening to three books by Pema Chodron because she talks about spiritual health because I'm really big on spiritual healing. So okay. I'm also listening to um, President Obama's latest book. Okay. Um, he's on the cover. It's black and white. That's all I can remember off the top of my head, but I'm listening to that. So but I that's, his, to that's his most recent book. The most recent book. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And how I is love that, that going, by the way? Oh, it's great. It's great. Oh, okay. It's okay. great. It's just that sometimes my spirit is not ready to listen to the journey of a politician. Mm -hmm. So I need to listen to peaceful things. So I listen mm -hmm. to meditation guidance. So I'm all mm -hmm. about um, finding peace in the chaos. So Pema mm -hmm. Trojan helps me with that. And when it comes to music, I like instrumental music, like um, harpsichord, Flute, Ooh. really big on flute. Harpsichord, um, okay. Harpsichord, oh my gosh. So you, you oh, listen Alice to more- Alice Coltrane, uh... Alice Coltrane. She, she found a way to use harpsichord in jazz. That's just boom. Okay, okay. I'll, so I'll, I'll I can tell out. you the name of, I actually have, I was just listening to her. So I lie. I do listening to I do listen to music. Um, you didn't lie. Some music. I didn't lie, but uh, you know <laughs> I listen to Tibetan chants. You know, but oh, also I bumped into this one singer from Guadeloupe. Her name is Celia Wa, and her music okay. is like very Celia Wa. Her, her music is in like social change type music mm, that okay. i like that kind of music but as far as um alice coltrane is concerned there's a journey in the one album i like is i can't say this journey in sachidanda journey in sachidananda but and, just look and, up and it, alice it's coltrane. jazz it's jazz a, it's heart jazz, jazz okay, okay. <sighs> Oh wow! Okay, I, 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 you know, I'm gonna, I want to get that experience. <laughs> For me, you know, everything. The great thing about the arts uh -huh. is no two people have the same experience, because no two people have the same spirit, mm. and that empowers the artists to be truthful to their voice, because there's somebody out there that will resonate with your voice, right? You don't have the same experience, but you have a similar experience because we're all human. Yes, we are. And in, in acting, they say when you're analyzing a script, there, 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 like basic stories being told. Mm -hmm. Fighting for power, fighting for love, which is sometimes interpreted as fighting for power, right? So it's ultimately about someone trying to take control, whether it's of another human being or it's of circumstances or battle against someone who's trying to take their control. That's the drama, right? Because otherwise, why would you watch it? Yeah, drama we need, is- We need some, we need conflict. <laughs> we need conflict, there's a conflict yeah. going on. Yeah. And um, regardless what your ethnicity is or your culture mm -hmm. is, you, you've witnessed conflict on some level. Yes. And so when you're listening to music, for me, when I listen to music, it's a question of, do you want to embrace a conflict, which I did in my 20s? Yeah. Or do you want to imagine the world without it? So that's what Alice Coltrane allows me to do, to imagine the world without conflict. Okay. Well, I would say this was really a beautiful <laughs> convo. Very, very good. I like this. This was great. Oh, yeah. Nice All energy. Right. A little different. But it's good. Different okay, so good. what do you mean by different? What's your normal? 
What's your well, normal? Well, I, I interview a lot of musicians, so it's it's a different frequency. It's a different uh, sort of a frequency. Yeah. But um, still entertaining. Still, you know, still, I learned a lot. I, I wrote a lot of things down here. I learned a lot from you today. So this was great. This was really, so really I'm good. grateful I was able to, you know, touch a soul. Yeah. Why are you touching the audience? The audience I'm touching that, the audience. Yes. Yeah, so there's going to be an audience checking you out uh, when we put this up. Yeah. So um, we, you gave us your website. Uh, you want folks to follow and follow on okay. social media, Insta, Facebook. That's mainly mm -hmm. all my favorite things: Twitter, Insta, Facebook. <laughs> okay. And you know, go to our website and subscribe, and you'll get updates. Okay. But more importantly, be at our festival, Conchal International Film Fest, ConchalIFF.com. Yeah. <laughs> Magali, I thank you. This was great. And uh, keep us posted at Musilog. I will. And if you have anything additional uh, on coming on the pipes, uh, we are here. Thank Honestly you. and truthfully, we are here. Thank we, you. We, we wouldn't say that we're here and then you can't find us. We are yeah, you know what? Here. You know, that's really disappointing <laughs> when that happens. <laughs> But we will be here forever. Okay. All right. I love it. All right. That. All right. Thank you so much, Sam. You're welcome. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. This is the Musilog Magazine podcast with host Sam Archer. We'll be right back. Come check me out, chriskeys.com. I'm worldwide. Tony Altamirano. Hi, I'm Gina. What's up, everybody? I'm Win Vu, award-winning remixer. Boy, yeah, I'm an artist. Yeah. Hi, my name's Justina Bethel. Hi, I'm Mike Bowen from Denton, Texas. How you doing? This is Tom Cut from Music by Tom Cut. Check out Samuel E. Archer's book, Hybrid Executive. We are in the business, and here's how you can be a better business person because you're running your business. Um, you can find my music at JustinaBeth underscore EL on Instagram or JustinaBethel.com, and I am a hybrid executive. I am a hybrid executive. I'm a hybrid executive just like you. Follow me at Koya Music, and I'm also a hybrid executive. I'm worldwide, baby, but just know I'm a hybrid executive. That's all you need to know, baby. Get on up, B. Check out my music, MikeBowen.com. I'm a hybrid executive. I'm a hybrid executive. Be sure to visit our website, Musilog.com. M-U-Z-I-L-O-G. Musilog.com, where music, entertainment, and culture lives.